Hallelujah. You say, what kind of title is that, Pastor Mike? What kind of title is that? Well, it's the truth. That's what it is. I don't like this world anymore. I haven't liked it for a long time. And I'm in good company. Because even Jesus, in the middle of the Gospels, he says, I'm going away. And they said, where is he going to go? Is he going to go to Spain? Is he going to go to the Greeks? Is he going to commit suicide? What's he going to do? But he was, he was in the spirit. He was, say, he was saying, I, 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 I live in a different place. And to this morning, I want to encourage you to come and live in the place called the kingdom of God. I want to encourage you, let's make sure that faith is our lifestyle. Let's make sure, as Jessica and Isabel were singing, that holiness is how we live. Because the Bible says so clearly, without holiness, you will not see the Lord. You know, people come to me and they say, oh, I say, are you born again? Oh, yes, I'm born again. Really? You read the Bible? No. Go to church? No. Tithe? No. How do you know you're born again? Oh, someone led me in a prayer. That works for the and 24 hour notice. That works maybe on your deathbed 1159. But that doesn't work for 20 years. That don't work for 20 years. My mama led me in a prayer when I was 12 years old, and I accepted Jesus. I felt the fuzziness of it all. And now I'm just living my life the way I want, but I know I'm going to heaven because I said that prayer. No, you're not. No, you're not. Because we've got to live this life to get to heaven. We've got to live this born-again life to get to heaven. There's no such thing. Unless you're 1159, lying in your deathbed, something comes in and leads you to the Lord. But let me tell you, you get to heaven, you're going to Bible school. If you don't learn, I remember Jesse Planner said, if you don't learn it here, you're going to go to Bible school up there and learn it there. You are going to learn about faith. Amen? And we need to make sure we're right with God now. I don't know if you guys follow what's going on in the Middle East. I don't know if you guys are in touch with what's going on in the Middle East. Because if you get caught up in the world, you get so focused on all these things happening in the world. You get so focused on all the stuff happening, politics around Canada, America. Some people are, so, are more involved with the U.S. politics right now than they are involved with what's going on in the Middle East. But my friends, the U.S. politics will not affect your destiny and your eternity. But let me tell you, what's going on in the Middle East right now is about to affect our eternity. Amen? I mean, what, what do you mean, Pastor? What do you mean? I'm talking, it's time to study out Ezekiel 38 and 39. I'm telling you that Russia, Turkey, and Iran, which is called Persia in the Bible, they are all aligned against Israel right now. Amen? And I'm talking to you that the Middle East is a tinderbox, and the Bible says this will spread over the whole earth. Amen? And it's time, my friends, like never before, to connect with God, connect with faith, connect with kingdom, and don't waver, and don't have an opinion about the world, and don't have yourself in the world. It's time, like never before. You say, Pastor, why are you always bringing us these heavy messages? The last time you preached to, it was a heavier message. Why can't you just come with nice, simple, nice messages? Why can't you tap me on the head and tell me everything's going to be okay? Because God gave me an assignment three years ago. He says, prepare your church for the last days. If, the, if my God, who is all power, all authority, and all wisdom said the last days are here, I think we better pay attention. And I'm here, I'm here, and not to breed fear, but to breed faith. I'm here to teach you how, to, how not just to survive, but to thrive in these last days. Amen? See, I got back, Linda and I, uh, we went back to our home, our other place in Cape Britain. We were there for a couple of weeks, two or three weeks. And, and, and when the week we got there, 
it was coming up to the last weekend of July. And every time that the last weekend of July, Linda's hometown in Inverness, they always have this thing called the gathering. And because so many people from the East Coast have come to Ontario, down to Boston, all over the world, have, have left there because in the old days there was no work there. So they all had to leave. Generations had to leave. So they always have this gathering. And in the gathering, there's always, it, it, there, it, there's like on the Saturday morning, there's a big parade, but it goes all week. Kaylee's and music. That this the whole town's known for music. And there's all different things going on, food going on, baked goods going on. It's just wonderful. And I, 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 I went up on the Saturday morning, I went up to see the parade. And, you know, in the, in the natural, it was such a corny parade. It was just a small town parade, mostly filled with old cars. The fire department comes out and revs their siren, and the police are all out there. And, and, and people go by, and business guys have floats that look kind of corny, but they're advertising their businesses. And the kids' marching bands are there, and school bands are there, and hockey team and baseball team you know, are walking by, and they're doing all this. Kind of, and, it was, it, and I was thrilled. I was thrilled because it took me back like 40, 50 years ago when I was a kid. And I was, and this was going on back then. And I looked around. I looked around. I saw people are so happy here because they're all meeting their friends from 40, 50 years. This is the one time a year they meet, they see each other, and they're just so happy to see each other. This is when the sermon came to me. Because I realize we're not living that way as much anymore. We're so caught up with all this junk going on. All the things that make no difference whatsoever. And you know, then I also, funny thing, I think it was Friday, I was watching TBN on YouTube, TBN, Christian Trendy Broadcasting Network. And they had an interview with Alice Cooper. How many people remember Alice Cooper? You're as old as me then. <laughs> Alice Cooper was a rocker, an extreme rocker back in, back in the past. The funny thing was, one of his record producers, believe it or not, he went to my dad's Anakin church. <laughs> and he'd bring us the Alice Cooper albums. We didn't know nothing back then, so we just listened to them. You know? Here's Alice Cooper on a 40-minute interview testimony saying how Jesus must be front and center in your life right now. And he must take first place in everything you do. And he's got a big youth camp going on down somewhere in Arizona where the youth come in, where he teaches the youth how to, how to, how to live and how to live for God. And then another strange thing I saw on YouTube. It was, it, was, it was weird. I didn't even know this was going on, but American Film Institute honored Nicole Kidman as like a, an actor of the century or something like that. Well, I, didn't, I don't really know much about Nicole Kidman, but I've always liked Keith Urban, the country singer. You know, you listen to Keith Urban, he's always got something about Jesus on every album. He's always got a song about salvation on his albums. Well, he gave an eight-minute talk about his wife. He's married to Nicole Kidman. And at the end, he said something that touched my heart. He says, you know, you guys are all going to come up and talk about all her achievements in, in film, and there's so many. But he says, I want, I'm here to talk about my wife. And he says, you know how my wife handles every situation and every challenge in life and everything that's going on in life, and she says, when you're in the acting business, there's many. She says, she always says to me, Keith would say, Keith, just love. Just love. No matter what, just love. And I realized why I was watching that. We've got to remind ourselves about these things. Who is God? Love. Why did Jesus go to the cross? Love. Why did God make you? Love. Just love. 
And see, what I have to see and I want you to see today is that there's a world and a way to live as a Christian that we must make sure we have embraced. And if you haven't embraced, you find yourself out someplace else, then it's time for you to come back home. It's time for you to come back into faith, come back into love, come back into what's important, come back into eternal perspective. It's time for you to come back. Because too many distractions are taking too many people out. Amen? If you don't know about Ezekiel 38 and 39, you need to study that for the next month or two. Do a Bible study. Break it down. Go through it all. Understand where we're at. Amen? I don't like this world anymore. I refuse to be part of it. So how can you refuse to be part of it? It's quite easy, actually. Don't listen to the news. Minimize your social media to, I showed Andre this this morning, I showed him how I use Facebook. (laughs) Share the service. That's it. Sunday morning, five minutes before the service starts, countdown starts, share the service. That's my extent of Facebook use. It's safer that way. Amen? Because I want to use my Facebook, my social media, as a tool to get the message of Jesus out. I don't want to take all that junk in. Amen? Too much junk. Amen? I want you to see this. Let's pray. Father, thank you. Thank you that we live in the finished work of the cross. Thank you, Father. I'm not talking about things we have to make happen right now. I'm talking about things that have been in existence for 2,000 years. I'm talking about a way of life that has been set out and put in motion since Jesus, you went to the cross, paid the price for our sin, rose from the dead, sat on the right hand of the Father, ever making intercession for us, opened up the throne room of God so we can boldly come in and receive help and grace and mercy in times of trouble. Father, I just thank you for this. I thank you, Lord, that what I'm talking about is actually the norm for a Christian. And yet it's become the abnormal for so many. So help us, Holy Spirit. Help us see what Christianity should look like. Not for somebody else, but for each and every one of us. Help us this morning to take personal responsibility for our Christian walk. In Jesus' name. Amen? Amen? Praise the Lord. See, you can't make excuses anymore. You know, back in 2003, we had a thing called a Worship Fest here. It was, a, it was a concert here. We had Friday night, Saturday, all, Friday, Friday afternoon, all day Saturday, all day Sunday, finished at night. We had over 20, I think over 20, if I'm right, that was over 20 of the world's biggest Christian bands come in this place. We had 12,500 people on this property over three days. Amen. And we ended the Labor Day weekend on the Sunday night. We ended it with what? Newsboys. That was my favorite Christian rock band. Still, it kind of is. Amen. But Peter Fuller, who was the lead singer and really who organized Newsboys in the beginning, when he comes to a concert, he's also a preacher because he doesn't see himself as, a, as just a singer. He sees himself as a preacher. He sees how salvation is so important. And th- I heard this then, but I'd also have an album of theirs in a live concert they did in Houston, and he does the same thing. And he used this scripture. And this scripture has affected my life in such a huge way that I want it to affect you in the same way. Because it gives us everything that we're all looking for if we'll just do it the way God wants us to do it. Amen? We're all looking for certain things. We're all looking for peace, joy, happiness. We're all looking for love. We're all looking for this. We're all looking for the blessing. We're all looking for that. And God's promised it to us. But we just have to do things His way. Amen? So Isaiah chapter 40 I really ask you to write this down and study it yourself. Because if it's had this effect on me, maybe it can have this effect on you. See, church services aren't just to come and hear a nice little message for 40 minutes or 35 or whatever it takes. They're to make notes. They're to take home 
the points and study them out so you're ready for next week. See, there, this is a really, when you have a sermon, you're given an assignment. In the old days, we always had notebooks with us. You know, Brother Jerry Savell would say, he says, so the three things you always bring to church, a pen, a notebook, and a checkbook. Some people don't like the checkbook idea, but you know what? Your heart is all your heart is always seen by the list of the checks you've written. That's how he taught us. Amen. And the notebook is what God speaks to us. Let me get into this now. I want us to go to Isaiah chapter 40, verse 28. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm waiting for it to come up because I want people to see it. Thank you. <laughs> verse 28. And this is God speaking through the prophet Isaiah. Now, the book of Isaiah is an amazing book. You understand what's going on today? You study the book of Isaiah. How many times? Remember we, how many people followed me for nine months as we went through on Saturday morning the book of Isaiah for nine months? Breaking it down for nine months live on Saturday morning live. Wasn't that fun, though? I should do that again. Praise the Lord. Amen. Verse 28. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor is weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the weak, and to those who have no might, he increases strength. Even the youths shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. Verse 31. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Now, this scripture is a transforming scripture for us who can get hold of this. Amen? It's everything we need and everything we want supplied by God if we'll believe. If we'll just do it his way, if we just understand kingdom, if we just come out of the world, this is what God says. Watch this now. Now, in Jeremiah, so you should study that one out a lot. I don't have time to break them all down. My, my job here is to introduce these to you so you can study them. Amen. I could spend the whole sermon on that. I could pull a four-point sermon out of that, and we'll never leave that. But I got a bit more to tell you today. Jeremiah 6 Verse 16, Jeremiah, the book of Jeremiah, is the weeping prophet. Jeremiah would, would talk to the Israelites about what God was saying, but the Israelites would not listen to him. Amen? We do not want to be like the Israelites in Jeremiah's time. We do not want to be sitting back and not listening or paying attention to what God is saying today because it could be detrimental to our eternity. Amen? Amen? You say, Pastor, why do you keep talking like that? Because it's the truth. It's the times we're living in right now. We are in the last of the last days right now. So Jeremiah 6.16, this is what the Lord says. Again, the Lord is speaking. God, Jesus is speaking. Stop at the crossroads and look around. Well, stop there. Let's stop. How's life going right now? How are things working right now? Come on now. Let's stop. Let's actually do a real deep examination of me. Me for me, you become the me. Don't think of someone else. Well, my wife had it all together. I'd just be right. If my husband had it all together, I'd just be okay. Nope. Forget about that stuff. How is it going for you? Get at the crossroads. Look around. Who's chasing me? What's ahead? Who's got my side? Who's got my guard? Amen? This is what the Lord says. Stop at the crossroads. Look around. Ask for, well, this has got my attention, for the old, the godly way and walk in it. That got my attention. See, my friends, I remember when the doors were open at church, we were there. We were never too tired. 
We were, well, I remember, I remember whatever the words said, that's what we did. We didn't have social media back for, you know, 30, 40 years ago. We didn't have all the opinions, all the junk, all the trash, the speed in our minds right now. We didn't have to prove ourselves to anyone else. We didn't have to be someone we weren't. We just were Christians, and we lived for Jesus, and we didn't really care what anyone else thought. When I heard, saw that, ask for the old, the godly way, and walk in it. I saw that just after I'd been at the parade when I was around that ta little town and I saw how it used to be 40, 50 years ago. That's not even when I was a kid, but that's, I'm getting old. Praise the Lord. I was a young man, maybe 60 years ago when I was a kid. Wow, isn't that something? Amen? Travel its path. What path? The old godly path. And you will, and you will, right, look at this now, look at this, don't miss this part. And you will find rest for your souls. What are you all looking for anyways? Are you looking for the same thing as me? Rest for my soul. Why? Because this world is driving you crazy. If you follow this world and this world system, you will go crazy trying to keep up with the pressures and the distractions and the opinions and the politics and the economies and all the junk that makes no difference to your eternity. But the world wants to make you sure that you know how important it is. It's not even important, my friends. Amen? Come on. Travel its path. Travel its path. Get on that highway of holiness. Get on the pathway that the Lord has for you. And you will find rest. Amen? But you reply, no, that's not the road we want. See, and so many Christians are there right now. No, I don't want to do that. No, I like, I want what I want. I see it's all about me. That's the problem, you see. If you actually think life is all about you, chances you never got born again. Chances are you've never truly accepted Jesus, your Lord and Savior. Because if you still think it's all about you, You've missed the whole point of salvation that the day you gave your life to Jesus, the Bible says you got crucified with Christ. And it's no longer you who live, but Christ lives in you. And the life you now live, you live by faith in the Son of God who gave his life for you. And then it says, don't miss this one. So don't set aside the grace of God. That was a warning, by the way. I don't set aside the grace of God. Because we need to make sure we're understanding if we're really going to heaven, and we've been at this for a few years, we're living for Jesus flat out. We're going for it flat out with Jesus. Amen? Can I get an amen? Can I get some happiness here? Amen? Because we have to understand this. Here's, here's Jesus. Oh, my goodness. Jesus knew what he was talking about, right? Jesus, he's the son of God. He was God. When you see Jesus, you're seeing the Father. So you know he's smart. Jesus in John 5, 18 if the world hates you, remember that it hated me first. You see, what's happening with Israel right now, the world hates Israel with a passion. With an evil passion, it hates Israel. Why? Because they're known as the children of God. They're known as God's special people. Amen? See, if the world hates you, Jesus said, remember they hated me first. The world will love you as, you, as one of its own if you belong to it. So the whole thing about wanting to be popular in this world. I just want friends. I just want to be liked. I just want people to like me. I just want to fit in. I just want this. What Bible are you reading? That's not Christianity. Christianity is in a popularity contest. Amen? 
Christianity turns into, can turn into a persecution contest. But pastor, why are you teaching me this? The only way Jesus says you're going to get along with the world is if you belong to it. And too many Christians are belonging to the world, making excuses why they can, instead of being understanding it's time to forsake. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. Then he, Jesus goes on with the audacity to say this. Jesus, what are you trying to tell us? Don't you know we're a modern church now? But you are no longer part of this world. I chose you to come out of the world. So it hates you now. Amen? See, we have to make sure we understand the times we're living in, my friends. We must understand the days we're living in. Because the last thing you want to be is taken by surprise. When Ezekiel 37, 38, 39 starts happening. You don't want to be, you want to be informed that we understand that no matter what we do, we have to stay in faith. Amen? Last scripture. Luke 21, verse 34, 36. Again, Jesus talking. Watch out. Put it up quick. Watch out. There's a warning. Watch out. Say, watch out. At the crossroads, watch out, duck. Duck. Who's behind me? Who's coming around me? Watch out. That's what Jesus is saying. That's like a behold, behold, if you're a King James person. Don't let your hearts be dulled by carousing and drunkenness. Pastor, what are you saying about me? How's your life going? See, we can get dulled by accepting the ways of the world and thinking somehow we're justified in doing so. Do you know there never is a justification in the Word of God for living by the world? There's no such thing as just being able to justify your life by living by world standards as a Christian. Amen? So, and by the worries of this life. So don't let your hearts be dulled by carousing, drunkenness, and the worries of this life. What is the biggest challenge facing the world system, people who live in the world today? Mental illness. Depression. What's depression? I got a definition of depression. Fear and motion. What's worry? Fear and motion. What's running this whole world? Fear. Amen. If you, if, you accept the, if you accept the world system, you have to accept the fear and be driven by fear and live by fear. Amen? What, what do we live by? Faith. Faith and fear are direct opposites. There's no place in a Christian's life to live by worldly standards because if you live by worldly standards, by default, you're automatically living in fear. Amen? The only place to live by faith is in the kingdom of God. Amen? Don't let that day, this is a prophecy Jesus is talking about the last day stuff. Don't let that day catch you unaware, like a trap. Ooh. For that day will come upon everyone living on the earth. What day? The last day. No one can avoid it. Some people actually teach it on the Internet. They say, yep, the Middle East is in, it's gonna, the war is going to be in the Middle East. It's going to be in the Middle East. But according to Jesus, it's going to be in every part of the earth. Is Canada part of the earth? Is Ottawa part of the earth? Then we're going to have to be involved. We are going to have to be involved, my friends. And you know the only thing that's going to bring us out is faith. Amen? Keep alert at all times. Now, Jesus, what about vacation time? What about days that aren't Sunday, Jesus? Can't I just be alert on Sunday morning, 10 a.m. to 12, and then go about my life the rest of the week? Come on, isn't that better than most people in Canada? Yes, it's better than most people in Canada, but it's still not good enough. Keep alert when? At all times. See, I'm just reading the Bible. You notice I haven't gone Greek, Hebrew. I haven't pulled out uh, any type of extra books to tell you what this says. It's pretty simple, isn't it? Amen? Keep alert at all times and pray. Well, that's a novel idea. 
that you might be strong enough. So prayer keeps us strong enough to escape these things, these coming horrors, and stand before the Son of Man. So prayer is the answer to not just surviving, but thriving. Amen? And yet if I called a prayer meeting for Sunday night, prayer meeting, I said, hey, 6 o'clock Sunday night, I want to have prayer meetings here. Five people maybe, Pastor Adam? Would we get ten people? Says, Pastor, you don't understand. I was already at church. Pastor, you understand? I, it's, you know, I'm tired. Pastor, you don't understand? Do you know how many miles that is to drive back to church? Uh, we're talking that if we pray, we'll escape all this stuff, that we'll be blessed in all this stuff if we'll just pray. But see how, how the world gets in? But I'm too busy. But I'm too tired. But I work tomorrow. And I said, you know, I said to people sometimes when, when they say, well, we can't come out to evening services, Pastor. I said, so y'all go to bed at 7 o'clock at night? <laughs> what are you doing from 7 to 11? <laughs> y'all go to bed at 7 o'clock at night? That's why you couldn't come to us prayer meeting? Well, Pastor, you just don't understand. Yeah, I do. <laughs> That's the problem. Amen? Now, I'm not trying to be mean. I'm not trying to. I'm just trying to get you thinking. I'm just trying to get you challenged. Where is my Christian walk today? Today. I'm at the crossroads. Where am I at? Amen? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. i got to wrap this thing up in one minute. How do I even got any points yet? Praise the Lord. This happens all the time. I'm going to be on time. Last point. And I want you to study this out this week. I want to give you homework. Mark chapter 4, verse 18, 19. This is the story of the parable of the sower and the seed. There's four types of people. There's the wayside, stony, thorny, and good ground Christian. <coughs> Obviously, one minute, we don't have time to do this all, right? But the one thing I want you to focus on, I'm going to read this out. Verse 18. The seed that fell among the thorns represents others who hear God's word, but all too quickly, the message is crowded out by the worries of this life. Does that sound like the world? The lure of wealth, desire for other things, so no fruit is produced. Just say no blessings. See? If you're, if you're being choked out by the world's ways, just say no blessings. Why? No faith. Because you're caught up in worry, you're caught up in fear, and God doesn't honor prayers of fear. He only honors faith, right? So, so see, see, so it's important. So the thorny per person, we call, we kind of joke something, the thorny person is the one who's caught up in the world system. And it chokes them out. Watch this now. The last type of person is who we, we all want to be. I'll teach this maybe in a Bible study. Maybe I'll do a series on this again. But the good ground Christians hear, accept, and produce. Watch this now. Verse 20, just one verse after the verse 19 comes verse 20. So the good news is here. And the seed that fell on good soil represents those who hear, accept God's word, and produce a harvest of 30, 60, or even 100 times as much as has been planted. Amen? That's the blessing. But see, the key is, my friends, and I'll end with this, it's so important that you and I don't just hear a good sermon. Hope you think this was good, by the way. But anyways, you don't just hear a good sermon, but you accept what was said. And then you produce. What's that? Your life is shaped and molded by what was said. Those people receive the blessing. Those people will thrive in these last days. Amen? So see, my challenge for you today is quite simple. I made a choice many years ago to leave the world system. I'm not perfect at it. I wish I could tell you I'm perfect at it. None of us are going to be perfect until we get to be with Jesus. Come on. But I purpose to limit how much world 
gets into my head. How much worldly stuff I do. Amen? Because to me, I know these scriptures. I believe these scriptures. And I know the cost and the consequences in my life. If I play with the world, it's not good. Or one time when I was young in the Lord, just getting in the Lord, I hadn't even didn't even I hadn't accepted the call to preach yet. But the doors were open and God was speaking to me. And it would be like every time I'd be still be working, but every time I'd go on holidays, I'd take a week off, a couple weeks off. It wasn't I was out of the Word because I made a promise to God to be in the Word, but I was kind of in the Word. I was buzzing through the word so I can get on with my holidays. And for a season there, every time I was on holidays, I'd get sick. Flu. This, that. And I said to the Lord one day, so I was talking to the Lord, and I was going through these symptoms. I said, Lord, what's up with this? I tithe. I figured that one out pretty quick. I'm in my Bible every day, Lord. But every time I go on holidays, every time I goof off a little bit, I get sick. And the Lord did not cut me any slack at all. And there's no point in getting the slack cut because they just make excuses for you. I hadn't accepted my call yet. I didn't know what my call was. I just knew there were some inklings that God had something for me to do. And the Lord blasted me. Now, Pastor, I'm talking about being blasted. Well, he blasted me. He said, Mike, with the call in your life, the call I've got in your life, you can't afford to let up one day where the enemy will get in. I learned my lessons real quick. When I go away, I get up in the morning, I do my breakfast, I get cleaned up, and I sit down my big old 10-pound Bible, and my devotions are the thing I do. Because I'm not getting out of the Word for nothing. I don't care what is planned. I don't care what someone says we got to do. After devotions, we'll do that. If the odd time I do miss him in the morning, I'm at nighttime doing my morning and night devotion because the word and prayer is what's going to keep every one of us. Amen? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm out of time. Praise the Lord. My friends, it all starts with salvation. It all starts with being born again. Jesus was so clear about this. I, I just, it just boggles my mind how people can, can still argue about this. When John chapter 3 is in the Bible, and Jesus said to Nicodemus, Nicodemus, you must be born again. Nicodemus, religious leaders, tried to argue with Jesus, tried to talk him out of it. Jesus says in verse 7, Nick, marvel not, I'm telling you, you must be born again. Goes down a few more verses. For God so loved the world, Jesus says to Nick, Nick, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever would believe in Jesus would not perish but have everlasting life. For Jesus did not come to condemn the world, but through Jesus the world, the people of the world, the unsaved people would be saved. And then Jesus goes, John 14, 6, John 14, 6, Jesus again, bold. I, like, that's why I think I like Jesus so much. He was bold. He was straight. You knew what he was talking about. Amen? What did Jesus say? This is, the, this is the closer. If you're online and you're wondering, if you're here today and you're wondering, this is the closer. Jesus had the audacity to say this. And you've got to choose today whether you believe it or not. You've got to choose it. Do I really believe this or not? Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Nobody is going to get to heaven without me. He said the Father, but the Father is in heaven. Amen? So I took that little liberty of saying so. No one is going to get to heaven. And if you're not going to heaven, you're not going to survive these last days very well. Amen? There's a prayer coming up on our screen. We call this a prayer of salvation. We ask everybody to say this every week. Not that we get saved every week. We get saved once. But my friends, there could be one, two, five, ten people in this church that have never said this prayer of salvation. 
They've never maybe heard the message like this. They've never made it, had it so clear. So we're all going to say this prayer together because if those people are here, and if you're online, I want you to say this prayer together with us because I want you to receive Jesus and start this kingdom journey, this Holy Ghost journey, this Christian journey right. Amen? Here's the good thing about this prayer. It always says, Father, forgive us of all of our sins. Forgive me of all my sins. And I, we can use that every day, by the way. I don't know about you, but I'm human enough to know at least once a week, I better be asking God to forgive me. Amen? So we can all use this prayer for that every week, too. Let's say this prayer boldly. If you're here, you haven't been serving Jesus, you maybe never served Jesus, but you say, I want in. This is the prayer that's going to get you in, into salvation, into his kingdom, and into his presence, get you born again. Let's say it together. Jesus, come on. I ask you to forgive me of every sin. I repent, and I'm purposing to change the way I think and live. I accept you as my Lord and my Savior. Jesus, help me learn about, about you and grow in this kingdom lifestyle. I declare you're my Lord and my Savior. Thank you, Jesus, for receiving me. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. If you said that prayer for the first time, online, folks, rewatch, folks, tell someone. Even contact us at the church. Just use that connect number and say saved. One of our pastors get in touch with you. Just, just, just use, just tell someone you got born again. If you're here, you've, you've given your life to Jesus. Reconsecrate your life to Jesus. You know what? Come back when we open the altar for prayer and say, you know what? I accepted that prayer. Let us pray for you. Let us help you in the journey that God has for you. Amen?